Hi, welcome to Pure Farm, your backstage pass to the world of coffee. Ever wondered how a humble coffee cherry becomes the signature Starbucks roast in your morning cup? Or how tens of thousands of pounds of green beans zip through high-capacity roasters, sorters, and packaging lines without losing an ounce of flavor? If you've found yourself asking, what really goes on behind those massive factory doors, Titanal, you're exactly where you need to be. Before we peel back the curtain on our next roast revealing process, hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. Missing just one episode could mean missing the answer that gets every coffee lover buzzing at your next break. And if you're thirsty for more bean to cup secrets, give this video a quick like while you're here. Starbucks' story really began in 1971 on the misty docks of Seattle's Pike Place Market, where three friends, Zev Siegel, Jerry Baldwin, and Gordon Bowker, opened a humble storefront devoted to sourcing and selling the finest green coffee beans from across the globe. Back then, Americans were brewing instant and drip coffee at home. Few saw a need to linger in cafes. But in 1983, Howard Schultz, newly appointed director of marketing, returned from Italy mesmerized by the convivial espresso bars of Milan and Venice. He envisioned Starbucks not merely as a bean purveyor, but as a gathering place, an experience as much as a product. By 1987, Schultz and investors had bought the company for $3.8 million. From that point on, Starbucks accelerated outward, from just six stores in 1985 to 165 by 1992, 1,000 by 1996, and ultimately, more than 30,000 locations across 83 countries by 2020. Today, Starbucks commands over 57% of the U.S. coffee shop market, and its green siren logo is as recognizable in Tokyo and Paris as it is in New York and Seattle. Behind every cup poured in those 30,000 branches lies an orchestrated process of agricultural science, precision processing, and artisanal expertise. At the heart of it all is Hacienda Alsacia, Starbucks' flagship farm on the slopes of Costa Rica's Poas Volcano. Spread over 10 hectares, this farm serves as a living laboratory. 30 researchers cultivate over 60 coffee varieties, from heirloom cultivars prized for brightness to disease-resistant hybrids engineered to withstand coffee rust fungus. In nurseries, 50,000 seedlings are nurtured under shade cloth, each tagged with RFID chips to monitor growth rates, leaf nutrient levels, and ambient humidity. After 9 to 11 months, saplings with the most robust growth and flavor profiles are selected for permanent planting. Once established among the volcanic soils and steady rainfall, the coffee trees bloom. Roughly 18 months after germination, clusters of fragrant white flowers burst open, and 60 days later, the branches hang heavy with glossy red cherries. Rather than employing harvest machines, Starbucks insists on handpicking at Hacienda Alsacia and at partner farms worldwide to ensure only perfectly ripe fruit is collected. A skilled picker can select up to 90 kilograms of cherries per day, inspecting each cluster for the exact hue and texture that promise peak sweetness and acidity. Under or overripe berries are left for the next pass or destined for alternative processing because the uniformity of ripeness is critical. An uneven blend can yield sour or hollow-tasting cups. Immediately after picking, cherries enter the wet processing line. They tumble through flotation tanks, where any berries that float, signaling immaturity or pest damage, are skimmed off. The survivors proceed to pulping, giant stainless steel drums equipped with rubber agitators that slip off the skin without bruising the inner seed. Beneath each pulper, a cascade of water washes away the pulp, which Starbucks now rebrands as cascara. Once discarded, this husk has been reinvented as tea blends, syrups, and even craft sodas, an example of how Starbucks maximizes every byproduct. The depulped beans, still coated with sticky mucilage, are next transferred to fermentation tanks. Here, they soak overnight in precisely controlled temperatures around 20 degrees C, where naturally occurring yeasts and bacteria metabolize the mucilage sugars. Farm technicians measure pH levels every two hours, gently stirring the tanks to ensure even fermentation. After 12 to 16 hours, the beans are washed vigorously in clear water channels, removing residual mucilage without damaging the delicate parchment layer. Drying follows in purpose-built patios and mechanical dryers. On sun-baked African granite drying patios, workers spread beans in a two to five centimeter layer, raking them every 30 minutes under a protective net that keeps out rain and birds. 
During nocturnal rains, automated covers glide into place. When weather conditions are unsuitable, beans move into counterflow drum dryers heated by biomass boilers fueled with renewable coffee parchment. The target moisture content is 11.5%, a sweet spot that locks in flavor while preventing spoilage. Each batch's moisture is confirmed via infrared moisture analyzers before the beans rest for 7 to 10 days in parchment-lined storage silos, where microclimate sensors track temperature and humidity to preserve bean integrity. Next comes the pivotal roasting process. Every day, Starbucks roasts over 450 metric tons of coffee in state-of-the-art ProBat fluid bed roasters at regional roasting hubs. These giants, each as big as a small room, use hot air to suspend and roast beans uniformly. Master roasters, seven in North America alone, stand at the helm, monitoring roast curves on real-time graphs that plot bean temperature, airflow, and drum speed. Green beans enter at 180 digas. Over 12 to 15 minutes, the profiles diverge depending on the desired roast level. 205 degrees C for a bright and floral blonde roast. 220 degrees C for a balanced medium pike place roast, and up to 250 degrees for an intense espresso roast. First and second cracks, audible pops as trapped steam bursts cell walls, mark critical inflection points where sugars caramelize and volatile aromatics develop. Sample probes drop roasted beans into cooling trays, where cupping specialists sniff and slurp small batches to ensure each lot meets a rigorous flavor standard, ideal acidity, body, aroma, and sweetness. Only then is a batch approved for blending or packaging. Once roasted, beans destined for whole bean sales or pour-over brewing are packaged in multi-layer, nitrogen-flushed bags equipped with one-way degassing valves. These valves release CO2 while preventing oxygen ingress, preserving the coffee's peak flavor for up to six months. For ground coffee sold in stores, Starbucks employs inline burr grinders calibrated to produce particle sizes within a 50 micron tolerance, whether for drip, espresso, or French press. Ground coffee is sealed in pre-weighed pouches or cylindrical cans, each inscribed with roasting date, package date, and recommended use-by for freshness. Logistics then takes over. Roasted and packaged coffee moves in climate-controlled trailers to distribution centers and flagship hubs, such as the Portland Richmond Distribution Center, one of Starbucks's largest, handling 100 truckloads daily. There, orders are cross-docked to a fleet of regional delivery vans that make next-day deliveries to individual stores, ensuring that no cafe sits on beans older than 10 days. Meanwhile, at the Clover TM Brewing Innovation Center in Seattle, Starbucks engineers and baristas refine the design and function of the Clover OS ER brewing system. Sketches become CAD models. Prototypes of stainless steel brew chambers, pumps, and valves are CNC machined to 0.1 millimeter tolerances. Components pass through ISO classified clean rooms before assembly, where welders join food grade pipes and electronics teams program PID controllers for plus 0.1 degree C temperature stability. Each assembled machine undergoes a battery of tests, flow rate verification, pressure decay leak tests, and timed brew cycles spiked with dummy grounds to validate extraction accuracy. Machines are then packaged in custom foam cradles and shipped worldwide, where they form the backbone of reserve bars, delivering bespoke V160 style pour overs in under 30 seconds. Let's not forget the milk. Starbucks sources fresh dairy from trusted cooperatives across Wisconsin, Oregon, the Netherlands, and New Zealand. Each morning, vacuum milking parlors. Extract milk from cows grazing rotationally on pastures. Stainless tanks chill milk to four degrees within five minutes of milking. Tanker trucks equipped with PID-controlled refrigeration systems then transport the milk to regional processing plants, where it undergoes ultra-high temperature, UHT, flash pasteurization at 275 DGF for two to five seconds. Homogenization follows at 3,000 PSI, breaking fat globules to sub-2 micron sizes for smooth mouthfeel. Sterile carton filling machines pour and seal the milk under a laminar flow hood, packaging it in Tetra Pak R cartons or MAP film pouches for barista-ready use. At store level, each barista participates in a rigorous training program, mastering the art of steaming milk to precisely 65 degrees with just the right foam microstructure. 
When a customer orders a latte, they watch as the barista pours texture-tested whole milk into a pitcher, introduces air via an espresso machine steam wand, and watches the milk thicken into glossy, velvety microfoam. A freshly pulled espresso shot, extracted at nine bars of pressure over 25 to 30 seconds, meets this microfoam in a choreography of pour and tilt, creating the smooth layers and latte art that have become synonymous with the brand. From volcanic farms in Costa Rica to humming roasters in the Pacific Northwest, from CNC machined clover prototypes to pasteurization lines at dawn, Starbucks's process fuses agronomy, engineering, logistics, and human artistry. Every cup carries the imprint of that global network. Sunlight filtered through coffee leaves, the hiss of high pressure steam, the clink of ceramic against counter, and the warmth of a barista's welcome. That is how millions of beans, gallons of milk, and cutting edge machines converge daily to deliver the familiar comfort of your favorite Starbucks drink, no matter where in the world you sip it. As you set down your cup, take a moment to appreciate the extraordinary journey distilled into each sip. Behind that familiar swirl of crema lies a story of global collaboration and meticulous care. The sun-ripened cherries hand-picked on a volcano's slopes, the careful fermentation and drying that coaxed out nuanced sweetness. The masterful roast curves developed by artisans whose senses are as finely tuned as any musician's, and the precision engineering that grinds, brews, and steams. Ingredients into the perfect mouthful. Even the milk, cultured, pasteurized, and froth to velvet softness, played its part in turning simple chemistry into sensory delight. Starbucks's process stretches across continents and disciplines. Agronomists track soil health and coffee rust resistance in research nurseries, while field technicians monitor pH and moisture in fermentation tanks. Mechanical engineers calibrate roasters to within one degree precision, and software architects optimize logistics so no store lingers on beans older than a week. Open-hearted baristas around the world, trained in the company's reserve bars and training academies, then transform all this into an experience, a crafted moment of pause in a bustling day. They learn not just how to steam milk or pull a shot, but how to greet you by name and make your beverage a small act of kindness. Even after that final pour, your coffee's life cycle continues. Spent grounds are composted in many stores, returning nutrients to urban farms. Packaging innovations, like compostable cups and reusable mug programs, seek to shrink the environmental footprint of your daily latte. Blockchain pilots offer transparency, letting you trace beans back to a specific farm and harvest date so you can celebrate the people and places that helped grow your coffee. All these threads, agriculture, technology, craftsmanship, and sustainability, form a tapestry that spans the entire planet, one still steaming mug at a time.